Lesson 4-1, Ratios and Proportions, and in this lesson you learn to solve proportions. Why is it important? You can use proportions to solve problems involving food and entertainment. Let's take a look at a real, uh, real world application on food. How would you like to eat chocolate for a living? That's exactly what Carl Wong does every day as Associate Director of Product Development for a chocolate company. His job is to create new candy bars as well as taste, uh, taste test existing candy bars in order to improve them. Okay. The chocolate company keeps their candy recipes confidential, but the basic ingredients found in a batch of chocolate bars are sugar, cocoa beans, milk, and flavorings. The ingredients for the batch of candy are shown in the table below. Okay, and the company that he works with, incidentally, is uh, Hershey Foods. Your Hershey chocolates is a big part of it. Okay, so let's take a look at the chart below and take a look at the ingredients of some of them. You have sugar, uh, parts per batch is 10, cocoa beans is 5, milk is 4 parts, and flavoring 4 parts. Uh, for a particular uh, candy recipe and by the way cocoa beans there's a uh, little bit of a tidbit about that okay if you uh, notice cocoa beans is also called cocoa uh, cacao sorry uh, basically chocolate is made from seeds or cacao beans of a tree called cacao the word cacao comes from two uh, Maya Indian words meaning bitter juice. Okay, because of a mistake in spelling by English importers, these beans became known as cocoa beans. So basically, cacao and cocoa are the same thing, they just don't know how to spell. Okay, so go back in, uh, going back to our problem. Okay, let's define what the ratio is it is comparison of two numbers by division. Okay. So when you talk about the ratio of x to y, it can be expressed in the following ways. It can be expressed as so, sorry, x to y and x colon y and x over y. Okay. So a ratio uh, is a comparison of two numbers, and we need to remember that it's the operation involved is division. Okay. And let's define when a ratio is in simplest form. Ratios are often expressed in fractions in simplest form. A ratio that is equivalent to a whole number is written with a denominator of 1. Okay, So a ratio is often expressed as a fraction in simplest form. Okay, So when you have a ratio that is equivalent to a whole number, it is written with a denominator of 1, for example. If you have a ratio that is 8, for example, okay, that means its denominator is 1. Okay, So let's take a look at the, the application at the beginning of the lesson. Uh, the table above shows that for every 10 parts of sugar in a batch, let's take a look at that table right there, okay, of chocolate bars, there are 5 parts of cocoa beans. The ratio of sugar to cocoa beans is 10 over 5. Okay? Suppose a company uses 30 pounds of sugar and 15 pounds of cocoa beans in a batch of chocolate bars. The ratio is 30 to uh, over 15. Is the ratio different than the first ratio 10 to 5? When simplified, both ratios are still equivalent to 2 to 1. So you have 10 over 5. Okay? And uh, if you want to simplify 10 over 5, obviously you need to divide it by its uh, divide it by its GCF, which is 5. So 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2, so you get 2 to 1. Same thing with 30 over 15. To be able to simplify it, divide it by its GCF, which is 15. So divide that by 15, divide that by 15, you end up with still 2 to 1. Okay, so what do we notice? In this case now, an equation stating that two ratios are equal is called a proportion. So 10 over 5 is equal to 30 over 15 is what we call a 
proportion. Okay? Let's see how we determine if two ratios form a proportion. One way to determine if two ratios form a proportion is to check their cross products. Okay? And the proportion at the right, okay, the cross products are 10 and 15. So the proportion at the right will be, well, let me rewrite that proportion at the right. It's going to be 10 over 5 and 30 over 15. Okay, that is our ratio on the right. Okay, so to be able to solve a proportion, it says here we need to cross multiply. So what do we do? We get the cross products of 10. Uh, we get the cross products, okay, 10 times 15 and 5 times 30, okay. 10 times, this is 15, so we get the cross product meaning we multiply 10 times 15 and we multiply 5 times 30. So in this proportion, 10 and 15 are called extremes and 5 and 30 are called your means. Okay, So know this because on the entrance exam you will uh, need this Okay, extremes and means. So 10 and 15 are your extremes, 5 and 30 are your means. So what happens after that is that you simply bring down 10 and 15 right here and that will give you that and you get your 30 and 5, multiply that and that should give you 30 times 5 right there. Okay, and 10 times 15 we know is 150 which is also your extremes, 5 times 30 is your means, okay. So your extremes should equal your means, and we know that it does. 150 is equal to 150. So in this case, the cross products of a proportion are equal. Okay? So when the cross products are equal, it forms a proportion. Okay? One way to uh, also uh, remember your extremes and means is that if you get your 10 over 5, okay, and you put it over 30 over 15 okay to be able to find out if uh, uh, to, to be able to find out what are your extremes you simply get the outermost numbers and those are your extremes and your innermost are your means. So that's another way to determine wh what are the extremes and what are the means. Okay, so let's take a look at the means, extremes, property of uh, proportions. It simply states that in a proportion, the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. If A over B equals C over D, then A times D is equal to B times C, again using cross products. Use cross products to determine whether each pair of ratios form a proportion. We have 2 thirds and 12 over 18. Okay, so we get the cross products, 2 times 18. Is it equal to 3 times 12? 2 times 18 is 36, 3 times 12 is 36, then yes. Okay, 2 thirds is equal to 12 over 18. This is a proportion. Let's look at letter B. We get our extremes, which is 2 times 5 times uh, uh, 2 times 5 times 5.2. Okay, we'll give you 13. That's our extremes. And then we enter 6 times 3.4, which is our means. Okay, and we notice that 13 is not equal to 20.4. Therefore, this is not a proportion. Okay, in the next example, okay, you can write proportions that involve a variable and then use cross products to solve the proportion. Okay, let's refer to the application at the beginning of the lesson. 
Suppose a chocolate company makes a batch of chocolate with 75, 75 pounds of cocoa beans. How many gallons will they use? Okay, so what do we know? We know that the ratio of cocoa beans to milk is 5 to 4. So in this case, let M represent the gallons of milk. Okay, now if you go back to the uh, beginning of the lesson, uh, you will notice that why is it 5 to 4? Because cocoa beans per batch is 5 and milk per batch is 4. So let M represent the gallons of milk because we want to find if 75 pounds of cocoa beans is used, how many gallons of milk will they need? Okay, so let's set up our problem. 5 parts of cocoa beans over 4 parts of milk equals 75 of cocoa beans, okay, over M gallons of milk. Okay, let's take out the units. You end up with 5 fourths equals 75 M. And remember, for this to perform a proportion, we need to get the cross, cross products and uh, your extreme should equal your means, okay? Using cross products, we now have 5M, 5 times M equals 4 times 75, okay? And then we simply solve for, we'll simplify 4 times 75 first, that becomes 5M equals 300 and we simply solve for m meaning we divide both sides by 5 and dividing both sides by 5 we end up with m equals 60. So in a batch of chocolate with 75 pounds of cocoa beans the company needs to use 60 gallons of milk. Okay let's take a look at a scale now a ratio called a scale is used when making a model to represent something that is too large or too small to be conveniently drawn at actual size. The scale compares the size of the model to the actual size of the object being modeled. Okay, so in a recent movie, not any more recent, long time ago, the movie Jurassic Park about dinosaurs, the dinosaurs were scale models and so was the sport utility vehicle that the T-Rex overturned. So if you saw that movie, you know what I'm talking about. The vehicle was made to the scale of 1 inch to 8 inches. The actual vehicle was about 14 feet long. What was the length of the model sport utility vehicle? Okay, so first things first. Let's change 14 feet to 168 inches. Why? because in our scale of 1 inch to 8 inches, the, the unit is inches. So we'll convert our 14 feet to 168 inches. And then we let L represent the length of the model vehicle. That's what we want to find out. Now if we look at how to solve this problem, we start off with the scale. Okay. 1 represents the scale. 8 represents the actual uh, unit so in for every inch in the model the actual length would be 8 inches so the numerator part will represent the scale uh, model and the bottom part will represent the actual uh, vehicle actual size or actual length of the vehicle okay uh, this is how we set up our problem and in order to uh, solve this we use cross products so we do 1 times 68 which will give us 60 168 and 8 times L which will give us 8 L and then simply solve for the variable L by dividing both sides by 8 we end up with L equals 21 the actual model sport utility uh, sorry the model sport utility vehicle was 21 inches long okay so the the model was only 21 inches long the one that you saw on the video okay the next example will be a problem that uh, we can uh, uh, use a ca calculator with so solve each proportion we have 5 over 4.25 equals 11.32 uh, over m okay again we want to solve this proportion by uh, let's use two methods first. 
Let's use pencil and paper method. Copy the problem down. And then we simply do cross products. 5m, 5 times m is 5m. And then this becomes 4.25 times 11.32. Okay? Then 4.25 times 11.32 is 48.11. And we bring down m. Divide both sides by m. We end up with m equals 9.622. Method 2 is using a calculator. And in method 2, by the means extreme, extremes property, okay, this becomes 5m equals 4.25 times 11.32. Multiply the means and divide by 5. So multiply the means, divide by 5. That's how you solve this. So basically, you just do this. Enter 4.25 times 11.32 divided by 5. End up with the same answer at 9.6. To two. So rounded to the nearest hundredth, the solution is 9.62. Okay, let's take a look at example B. This time we're not going to use a calculator. You have x over 3 equals x plus 5 over 15, and we want to find the value of x. Again, using the proportions property, okay, means extremes property of proportions. Okay, we do. Uh, x times 15, which is 15, uh, 15x. Uh, we copy the problem first. Okay, that's a given. So x times 15 will be 15x, and this becomes 3 times x plus 5. Okay, important here. Do not forget to put parentheses when you're multiplying your means. Okay, so if you forget to put the parentheses, okay, that will be wrong because you are not going to distribute the 3. So, uh, having done that, we distribute the 3. 15x equals 3x plus 15. We now have variables on both sides. Let's get rid of one of the variables by subtracting 3x to both sides. If I subtract 3x to both sides, I end up with 12x equals 15. And then I simply solve 4x by dividing both sides by 15. I end up with x equals 5 over 4. Okay, and I leave the check up to you. The solution is x equals 5 over 4. The last part of this lesson involves rate. Okay, the ratio of two measurements having different units of measure is called a rate. Again, so if you have a measurement, if you have a ratio, I'm sorry. Uh, we, uh, where you have two measurements having different units, we call that a rate. Okay, so for example, 30 miles per gallon is a rate. Okay, why? Because when you say 30 miles per gallon, 30 miles per gallon means per one gallon. You have a ratio, okay, of two measurements having different units. One is in miles, the other one is in gallons. Okay? So, proportions are often used to solve problems involving rates. Let's take a look at this example. And this is our last example. In the first 30 minutes of the open day, opening day of the Tex Texas State Fair, 1,252 people enter the gates. If this attendance rate continued, how many people visited the fair during the opening hours of 8 a.m. and 12 midnight the first day? Okay, so first things first, word problem. That means we need to find out uh, 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 what we know and we need to uh, define the variable. And in defining the variable, like always, we use a let statement. So let P represent the number of people attending the fair on opening day. Okay? Because that's what the problem is asking for. So write a proportion for the problem. Okay? And then we get 1,252 over 0.5 equals P over 16. Okay? Notice that both ratios compare number of people per hour. Okay? Why is it 1,252 over 0.5? Let's analyze the problem. In the first 30 minutes of the opening day, the Texas State Fair, 1,252 people entered the gates. So basically, 1,252 people entered the gates in 30 
minutes. So 1,252, the unit is people. 0.5, the unit is minutes. Okay, well, in this case, hour, 0.5 of an hour. So therefore, if that's the case, if uh, uh, the numerator is uh, using people as the unit and the denominator is using hours, okay, that means that this one should also be people and this one should be hours as well. Okay, so they have to have the same unit. Okay, so that's how, how we set up. Now, why is it 16? Okay, because from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight would be 16 hours. Okay, so from there, we do our cross products. Okay, we use uh, what we know in cross products. So we have 1,252 times 16. We multiply our extremes and we multiply our means. Okay, 1,252 times 16.5p and we simply solve for p. Okay, multiply 1,252 times 16 and divide it by uh, uh, 0.5. Okay, you end up with a value of 40,064. So, if the attendance continued, okay, if the attendance rate continued, 40,064 people visited the fair on opening day. And let's see if our answer makes sense. Use estimation to check your answer. About 1,250 people enter the fair every 30 minutes. And if you do that, you follow that pattern. This means that about 25 people entered every hour. And then we simply multiply 25, okay, or uh, times 16, okay, uh, 16 times uh, 2.5 thousand or 40,000 people entered, okay? And the answer becomes reasonable because our exact answer is 40,064. And that's the end of the lesson. Thank you for watching.